I'm going to briefly explain the various approaches you can take when editing video inside Premiere Pro. And then we're going to go inside Premiere Pro and take a look at most of the features that you'll be using as you edit video in Premiere Pro. This will just be a demonstration, so just sit back and relax as we go through all of this. Your first basic task when doing video editing is to put untrimmed clips in a logical order on a timeline, or as it's called in Premiere Pro, a sequence. And you could call it a day right there. You've got your story done. The clips are in some logical order and your story is told. But most likely you're going to want to go beyond that. You're going to want to remove or trim parts of those clips. You want to remove things like jerky camera moves or take out some long sound bites, just leaving the short, pithy sound bites that you want to use and trim away out of focus shots, stuff like that. Beyond that, since you're working with Premiere Pro, you're going to want to do some advanced editing. That involves creating matched action and tight and wide edits where the clips line up nicely. Or you want to change the clip speed, duration, and direction, meaning slow motion or reversed clips. You want to put clips in motion, meaning you're taking the entire clip and moving it across the screen. You want to apply effects to clips like color correction or some other means to change the appearance or sound of a clip. You can apply and adjust transitions between clips. Then you can composite or layer clips or mix audio tracks. These are the various approaches that you're going to take as you edit clips inside Premiere Pro. So let's take a look at some of these features in Premiere Pro. This will just be a general overview. We'll cover the specifics in a whole bunch of upcoming tutorials. So let's just start out with the basic way that you do editing. What you need to do is you need to get your video clips from your project panel into your timeline. And when they're on the timeline, you can do more editing there. Or you can then do some editing before you put them on the timeline. So let's just start by just putting something on the timeline. Go over to my video clips folder here, the bin as it's called. Take this first clip and just drag it to the timeline. And there we go. You have this clip now on the timeline. It's the full original clip from the, its beginning to its end. This is stock footage from Digital Juice of that waterfall. And that's the whole clip right there, beginning to end. If I play it, you'll see it goes like that. 10 seconds or so. Now that's one way to do things. You can also sort of pre-trim clips before you put them on the timeline. I'll take a look at the second clip here by just double clicking on it and putting it here in the source monitor. Here I can look at it as well. I want to trim this. It's 10 seconds long and it's just this static shot of the waterfall. It doesn't need to be 10 seconds. I just want maybe 5 seconds. Trim it down to about 5 seconds there. Let me just trim it back a little bit. There you go. So I pre-trimmed it essentially. And now when I drag it to the timeline, you can see that it's shorter. It's only 5 seconds long relative to this 10 second clip. You can tell the length of clips relatively by how they look here in the timeline. This is obviously shorter. And that one to the left. That's one way to trim things. Another way to trim it is by looking at them in the thumbnail view here. So I'll go to the icon view or thumbnail view. Go down here. So I'll just double click on this bin here and open that up and you can see the icon view here. And I just hover over here and move my mouse left and right. I'm not holding down the mouse button. I can do what's called hover scrub to that. Let's say I want to pre-trim this guy. So I just click on it to turn on this little timeline view there, this little scrubber view there. I can scrub through it this way. I can press the I key for an in point and the O key for an out point. There you go. Let's do another one over here. Do the same thing. Just kind of scrub you back and forth. I'll do an in point there and an out point there. So here I'm pre trimming here inside the project panel. I can select this one and also select this one. Now I have two of them selected and I drag them down to the timeline. They also are both now pre trimmed. They're on the timeline there in their trimmed state. A little bit shorter than the original length here. So you can pre-trim that way. You can also bring clips into the timeline through the media browser. If I go over here, these clips are not in my project panel yet. They're not linked yet, but I can go here and let's say go we'll find a clip that I like. Let's go down here a ways and got my time-lapse clips here. I can scrub through here as I did before inside the project panel icon view, but I can't put in and out points in this one because this is not inside the project yet. But I can take this guy and drag it right to the timeline, and that does two things at once. It puts it here in the timeline. It also imports it just by bringing it right here inside the project panel. There you go. This new clip was just added. It has no audio associated with it. That's why it has no clip down in the bottom here. But now we've added it. So once you've got clips on the timeline, you can edit them there as well. So here we have these clips here. Let me expand the view a little bit so you can see them a little bit better. Drag this over a bit. So these are these five clips we've got there. If I want to shorten this one in the middle for some reason, if I want to make it a little bit shorter, I can just hover my cursor over it and it turns on this red trim tool either end. You can see that's pointing in or pointing in from the left, pointing in from the right. It means I can trim this guy down. If I just click and drag, I can drag that down. I'm making it shorter. 
that leaves this gap here, which is usually not a good thing. It turns to black there while you go from one clip to the next. So usually you don't want to leave a gap, but that is the trim tool. That's how it works. I'll do Controller Command Z to undo that. If I can do the same thing at the beginning, that as well. Same little issue with the gap. Let's say I don't want to have that gap, so I can use a keyboard modifier. It's called holding down the control or the command key. It turns into a yellow trim. That means it's going to be a ripple edit. So if I drag it over, it'll fill the gap instead of leaving the gap there. Same thing for the left side. I can click away to deselect the ripple edit tool. Moving over here, hold down the keyboard modifier to switch the ripple edit tool back on and trim the left side of this clip and have the gap automatically get filled in. I can do what's called a rolling edit. If I put my cursor right on the edit point and hold down the keyboard modifier, it turns into this little four arrow thing that says I'm going to shorten the length of one and lengthen the other one. So if I drag this thing to the left, it's going to shorten this guy and make this guy in the right longer. So that's how that works. And you can see that on the upper right-hand corner there, you can see that going on. You can see exactly where the in and the out points are going to be if I make those changes. There we go. There are other editing tools, notably Cut, Slip, and Slide, and I'll discuss those in upcoming tutorials. But these are the main ones here, Ripple, Trim, and Rolling Edit. If I put my cursor somewhere near an edit point and click away to not select that one anymore and press the T key, that opens up this little trim panel here inside the program monitor, where I can actually do my trimming right here in the monitor instead of down here in the timeline. Do my Rolling Edits right there, watch them as they play back. If I want to switch over to the ripple edit tool, I can do that as well. You can see that one moves depending on whether I'm going left or right. It's a little more intuitive here because you can see it right there as you're hovering over it. So your eyeballs are focused up here in the program monitor. So that's how you can adjust the lengths of clips inside the timeline. You also want to, let's say, add clips to your project. You usually don't work only on one layer like this, one video layer and one audio layer. You typically composite things here inside the video side where you composite or layer in other kinds of clips or still images or graphics and you typically do mix audio down here so let's start off by mixing some audio in got this music here i'll put that down on a separate track so now the audio and the audio associated with the video will play together barely hear the music right so you can adjust the volume level of the music or the volume level of the waterfall well, the waterfall really is what's too loud so i just click on that clip and i can see its audio there on the bottom, there's a video on the top, and I can adjust the audio volume in multiple ways, but one way is to go to the effect controls panel over here, and adjust the audio volume over here. I'll just show you that. There you go. So I adjust the volume level for that clip. I'll reset that and show you also how you can use the audio mixer to do the same thing. I'll just control it over here. like that. So you'll be adjusting audio in a number of ways, but typically through the mixer or by adjusting the volume level here inside the clip, inside the effect controls panel. So that's how you mix audio. You can also then composite video or composite images. So let's bring in another clip by going to the media browser here. Let's get some other clip besides the one we brought in before. We'll get this one here. And I'll import this one by right clicking on it saying import and that brings it in. Go back over here to where I just imported it before. I'll put that on top of everything here. Put that right on top. When I do that, it covers things up. The things below it are gone. I'm going to get rid of this music here so it's not so prominent anymore. So this guy's going to cover up what's below it. Just covers it right up. So I'm going to not cover it up. I'm going to adjust its size so that it works as a picture in a picture. I'm also going to trim it a little bit by bringing it so it just matches the length of these two clips here. So I can select that and I can change the size of it by changing its scale like so. I can also change its position by just selecting it and get these handles around it and move it around. So I'll put it right over there like that. It's not necessarily good editing. I'm just showing you the things you can do here. So there you go. There it is. And you may want to move this guy around from that position to another position. So you can always change the position using keyframes over time. So I'm going to move that to the right a little bit like that. And in that time, we'll bring it down to the lower right hand corner now. So let's watch that at work. It'll start moving down now. There we go. And also, like once I get it down to the bottom like that, I can decide, okay, now I'm going to bring it up to full screen, for example. So I can just do this, and it'll bring it up to full screen over time, like so. There it goes to full screen. You can animate motion like that, and you can also apply effects. So let me just apply an effect here to the next clip, for example. This clip will just have this guy 
let's say, go black and white. And so I'll go to the effects panel and find a video effect that I can apply to that. And you can also apply effects to audio, but I'll just limit myself to video right now. Go on down. I want to find the color correction tool that I like to work with a lot, and that's the Fast Color Corrector. Go on down there and apply it simply by dragging it to it, and that applies the effect right to the clip. And you can see the controls, the properties of the effect over in the Effect Controls panel. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to knock the saturation down to zero. Let me get this current time indicator to the very beginning of the clip using a keyboard shortcut, the up arrow, which we'll talk about again. All these little details that I'm doing now, we'll talk in more detail later. Knock the saturation down to zero so it's black and white. Turn on keyframes for that. Go in a little ways, like about that far, for example. And not only bring the saturation to full, but maybe go beyond full to make it look really rich. So you can animate the effect over time as well. Something like that. There we go. So we can mix audio, we can overlay clips, composite clips, as uh, picture in a picture, we can apply effects and have those effects change over time. And then finally you can create titles that or text or something like that can go on top of your clips. So let's just go do that by going to title, new title, based on a template. And we'll go on down here, let's say to the upper thirds, for example. And let me scroll down a little bit here. There we go. Let's try this one instead. I click OK. That'll bring this in as a template, opening up this titler, which is a really wonderful tool here inside Premiere. I'll change the text here by just selecting the text tool and changing it to, let's say, Desert Plateau. And you can see that the text kind of runs off the edge there, but that's not a problem with this little template. I just can grab the sides of these guys and move it down a little bit to make it sort of fit there. And I can drag it over to the side here and make it fit there, like that. You can adjust the properties of these templates, or you can make things from scratch too as well. Let's just accept this now and close this down. Don't need to save anything. It just immediately shows up inside the project panel. There it is. I can add that to this little scene here. I can actually put it above the other one if I want to. Oh, this says Desert Plateau. It doesn't really apply here, right? Let me move it over to the Desert Plateau where it does apply. There we go. You can make it longer like that as long as the clip goes, and you can also put effects on that as well. You're not limited to putting effects only on video clips. You can put them on anything that you can put inside your project, inside the timeline. Let's just put a little transition on that guy. Put a video transition on there. It'll dissolve. I'll add that to it right there at the beginning, like that. Dissolve that thing on. See how it comes on like that? Here comes the Desert Plateau title. I'll make the dissolve a little bit longer. I'm going to zoom in so I can see it better and then hover over there and drag it out a little bit longer. So it just takes a little bit longer to come on. So the title looks gradually comes on like that. There we go. And we can make it dissolve off as well. So that just gives you a sense of most of the major tools that are available to you to edit video here inside Premiere Pro.